overlooking the Hudson River, on one of the highest points of New York City, stands a building called International House. It's not a pretentious building and does not appear as interesting as its neighbors, the tomb of General Ulysses S. Grant, the impressive Riverside Church, or the Union Theological Seminary. Yet this building, for all its simple appearance, is the living proof that man's greatest and most elusive dream, the dream of universal brotherhood, can't become an actuality. The New York International House was founded six years after the First World War. Some years later, another house was built at the University of California in Berkeley. Then another at Chicago University. And in 1936, a fourth was dedicated at the Cité University in Paris. At the beginning of each scholastic year, a host of young men and women from the far corners of the earth come to these international houses to take up residence while pursuing graduate or professional studies. From India they come, from Korea, from South America, from Poland, from England, Germany, Arabia, Israel. From more than 60 nations they come, these young men and women, each with his own traditional prejudices or differences, yet unified by one ideal, that brotherhood may prevail. For within these walls, men and women of all races, colors, and creeds live in harmony and mutual understanding. Without the suspicions and prejudices that have existed among the peoples of the earth since time immemorial. For the newcomers, the first few days in this unique house are always full of excitement. Meeting people from lands they have never seen. Shaking hands with the world, as it were. This is an experience which raises the spirit and opens the mind. For this simple act of meeting, just meeting, is in itself an expression of the desire for friendship. Here, an English girl introduces two Indian girls to a Canadian and an Australian. A Dane introduces a Korean to a Czechoslovakian. And an American shakes hands with a Japanese again. Within a short time, life at International House becomes quite serious. Studies occupy a great part of each student's day. After attendance at the classes and seminars of the various institutions of learning, there is much to do. Writing, preparation, serious work. For these young men and women are all preparing themselves for careers in their respective countries. Careers that in many instances will inevitably lead to positions of power in art, education, science, politics. As the students become more and more acquainted with one another, restraints that may have existed at first are completely forgotten. A delightful atmosphere pervades the whole house. Friendships begin to grow, barriers disappear. The student council, elected by the students, and comprised of members from many countries, 
has the responsibility for coordinating student participation in the many activities which make up life at International House. Cultural programs and other forms of entertainment are selected to satisfy every variety of interest. For typical Americana, folk singers such as Burl Ives. As I walked out in the streets of Laredo, as I walked out in Laredo one day, spied a young cowboy all wrapped in white linen. Wrapped in white linen as cold as the clay As I walked out in the streets of Laredo As I walked out in Laredo one day Spied a young cowboy all wrapped in white linen Wrapped in white linen as cold as the clay For classical music other talented performers. <laughs> Distinguished visitors regularly speak on various aspects of international affairs. Among these are Dr. Ralph Bunch, Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt, and General George Marshall, Chairman of the Board, New York International House. Discussions spring up everywhere. No subject is ever taboo. Politics, religion, science, art, philosophy, all are discussed with unbounded zest, for education has no frontiers. A favorite rendezvous at the end of each day is this room, where the talk, whether gay or serious, is always warm and friendly, affording untold opportunities for enlightenment on the characteristics and thinking of people from countries other than your own. And the little things of human existence, the intimate things, it's in these that often the deepest roots of understanding grow. The occasional dances, which present further opportunities for friendship and understanding, are brought to a close by a gala farewell dance. Though coming here primarily to study in specialized fields, the underlying ambition of all these young people is to take home with them, when the time comes, a clearer understanding of the world and its ways than they had before they came. At the end of each scholastic year, more than 3,000 students depart from the four international houses for their homelands. Can it be doubted that each goes home with a wider social horizon, a deeper understanding of human nature, and a broader conception of what constitutes a true civilization in the world, a kind that could grow in a world wholly at peace? For these young people have proved that the brotherhood of man can be established but only through practicing brotherhood. For in this age, man's only way to survival is through brotherhood. There is no other way.